So we've done aggregate functions. We've talked about the lambda function. We've used the dot filter method. And the last thing that we're left to do with this uh, dot group by method in the data frame is to actually look at some transformation of some columns. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is relatively straightforward. Um, it's not actually something that we would need to use the dot group by for, but it will give us a little bit of additional practice with our lambda functions and also hopefully show us how this dot filter works before we start combining it with an aggregation. So I have a little note here on line 23 that says uh, I want to go ahead and create a temperature in Celsius column. Uh, I did reference before these temperatures are in Fahrenheit. Uh, for anyone who's familiar, I would hope so. 71 degrees in Celsius is awfully warm. Certainly wouldn't want to be outside in that weather. So um, to do this, um, I, first before we do anything else we're just going to look at it and we're going to go with grouped temps as we have been and much like we use dot trans uh, dot filter we're going to go transform and much like the dot filter which used a lambda function we are going to use a lambda function here now uh, what i am looking to do for each x uh, each numerical value in a column I am going to make this conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And to make such a conversion, um, we first subtract 62 degrees, and then uh, we simply multiply by five ninths. Um, let me make uh, actually think that this is the PEP8 convention, as odd as that is with uneven spacing around my operators. Um, so I'm saying I'm going to subtract 32 degrees and then multiply by 5 ninths for each value in each of the numerical columns for my data frame. And uh, go ahead and print that out. I've got an additional print statement I'm going to use later. Let's get rid of that. Let's go ahead over to my terminal. Let's run that code. And I can see it does indeed apply that function to each of my numerical columns. Now, it doesn't make sense to do the same thing twice. I'm also not very keen on all of those uh, extra decimal points over there. So I'm going to use the round function. Looks like those are my green parentheses. Right inside of that, I'm going to put uh, the parameter 2, saying I want my numbers rounded to two decimal points. We'll make sure that works the way I want it to, and it does. Go ahead and clear that out. Come back to VS Code. Now, um, so printing this is all well and fine. But um, I haven't really made any changes to my actual data frame. Um, for example, right, if I now um, actually run this print statement at the bottom, I get two data frames, right? I've made this transformation, but uh, that series or that data frame that was returned from that transformation doesn't go anywhere. And that's not very helpful. So what I want to do is I want to actually assign this back to my data frame. Um, but before I do that, I want to, I don't need to apply this to both of my columns, right? Um, say this temp one column was not a temperature column at all. Uh, it was some barometric pressure. Um, and it wouldn't make sense for me to do this, uh, transformation on that column. So what I could do, uh, much like we do in several of our other data frames or, um, dictionaries. I hope you're starting to pick up that these data frames have a similar structure to a dictionary. Look at this. We have curly brackets. We have a key. We have a value, which is a list. We have a key. We have, again, a value, which is a list. We can, you know, reference the name of our data frame and use a square bracket to reference the key and get the series or the value for that key back, right? kind of like a dictionary. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can just look at the temp column the, the same way we would in a dictionary, printing the name and the group in a for loop. Go ahead and give that a save. Go over to the terminal, clear out my output, execute that. And sure enough, we can. I can look at just the grouped temperatures. 
So that certainly informs my next step when I want to apply this transformation only to one column of my data frame. And the column that I would like to apply that transformation to is my temperature column. So I'll go ahead and put in these square brackets, give that a save, we'll look at it, make sure it's what we want. That looks like the numerical series that I'm after. Everybody's happy. Now I can move about and go ahead and assign this to my data frame. And as I mentioned, just like a dictionary, um, I have the name of my data frame and the name of the key that I want to assign this to in square brackets, right? Same sort of syntax as a dictionary, nothing new. We'll go ahead and clear out our value. Um, looks like I'm not printing anything there. I'll need to uncomment this line. Now I print this and I can see my temp Celsius column added on the end. That's all well and fine. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this data frame before we move on to the last step um, in which we will combine an aggregation um, into our transformation and then we will call it a day for this lesson. Um, so what I want, I'm going to do is I'm going to want to say temps is equal to temps dot drop and I just want to drop this duplicate column. Um, the dot drop method, you'll find yourself using this just to rid yourself of unnecessary col columns and data sets relatively often. Um, and if I run that, um, looks like I've got some sort of issue. Oh, um, I'm guessing it wants me to define an axis. Um, it wants me to uh, say that I'm trying to remove a column not some index, not some row. Um, and I change that access to one, I can see that temp one is now gone from my data frame. So that's all well and fine. Now the last thing is to do some sort of meaningful transformation inside of this dot transform method. Um, again, gonna be using the lambda function, gonna be using x, that's convention for our lambda function. But let's say that we have a corrupt government official uh, in charge of the agency that took these temperatures. And this official is trying to make a claim that global warming is not r real. And um, this official says, um, on this particular day, if any city had an average temperature of above 53 degrees Fahrenheit, let's go ahead and lower the temperature recordings for that day by 10%. Certainly pretty nefarious, but um, a good example of how we might want to apply a transformation to some groups and maybe not to other groups. So um, I'm gonna change the name of this column from uh, temp Celsius to temp adjusted and get rid of this comment that no longer makes any sense. And if you've worked with list comprehensions, this is gonna look somewhat familiar in the fact that we are going to um, put first the value that we want um, and that's going to be um, x times 0.9 if x dot mean is greater than 53 and otherwise we're not going to transform that temperature at all. We're going to leave it just where it is. I've got a red squiggly that tells me syntax error. I had an unpaired parentheses over there and now it looks like I'm going to be in good shape. I'm going through, I'm grouping by city, then I am adjusting my high temperatures because we are corrupt, we don't believe in climate change, so we're going to augment the temperatures to support our untrue opinion. Uh, we are then going to drop an unnecessary duplicated column in our data frame and go ahead and print out that combined data frame after all of our operations. Move over to the terminal, give that a run, and I can see the first city, uh, Denver, did not qualify 
Uh, I know that from a previous video when I did this test, but I do know that Austin did qualify, and I can actually see where the original temperatures were nice round integers. Uh, I am now stuck with some floats, and those are no longer even numbers. I can tell that the transformation was applied in Austin as it was in San Francisco. So um, that's a little breakdown of the most common ways that you'll be using split apply combine with the dot group by uh, method using aggregate functions, the dot filter, and the dot transform method.